Hello, welcome to today's video. We are on page 169 of Keyboard Musicianship Book 1. And we are doing, let's see, I think this is, yeah, this is the last two of our exercises from the previous page of harmonizing with the tonic, the subdominant, which is four, the dominant seven, which is five, or the dominant six five, which is the abbreviated version in first inversion. Okay, so we have here number three, British folk tune. Okay, so what we're gonna do is once again, we're going to understand the suggested style of harmony in the left hand. And then we're gonna to try to fill in the blanks of what has not been written in. Okay, so as we can see here, the harmony is very bare. We only have single notes for either hand. We don't have chords. And so we're gonna to have to, based on what I see here in the first full measure is do outlines of chords. So let's go ahead and just play the melody first. Ready? Here we go. One, two, three. Okay, so that's our melody, British folk tune. Now let's go ahead and play the harmony. And we have some chords, symbols here, but the established or the suggested style of harmony is spelling out chords. We are familiar with one, three, five style of accompaniment. The first two measures are going to be exactly the same. And this is going to be here, the left hand for the next one, measure four, would obviously be that one as the will of an number five. And then notice here that it does say D7. And the reason why it says D7 is because it's asking us to prepare for this one here on measure seven and eight. We went from here all the way to an octave outline of G major. So what's the best chord that we can play here on measure number six to prepare us to get to here? Well, let's see. D7 we know is this. So should we play all four notes. Let's remember, we only have one measure to play this, and we also have to play it in root position, and we only have three beats to do it, and they've been established that they're gonna be quarter notes only. So I think the best option would be to play the root, the third, and the seventh, because we do need the seven, chose to use. Because my thumb is being utilized or occupied on beat number three, I could jump it down to G and spell it out, but it would make more sense to just play it with finger number two, and then I tuck my finger underneath, and then I spell out this triad with the usual fingering of a left hand triad. Okay, so let's go ahead and write in the notes that we've created there. Go ahead and take your time now. And now let's go ahead and play. Remember, everything should be non legato. One, two. Take a look at number five now. I promise we're not going to play that lively so we can understand it better. Uh, let's go ahead and play this next British folk tune. It is in 6 8 time and it is an E minor. It is a minor key. All right, here we go. Let's go ahead and understand this melody first. One, two, three, four, five. Two. Looks like we have a 
repetition. So, as you can see, both systems are an exact repetition of each other. So, it's not going to be that difficult to understand the harmonies here. Let's go ahead now and take a look at what those chords are. So, left hand, E minor. And notice here what the style of accompaniment is. We have dotted quarter. Very similar to what we did on page number 167, where we had a bass chord kind of accompaniment. But this time, because it is six, eight time, we're doing the largest uh, a single unit, which is gonna be the dotted quarter for the six, eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, just the bass note. Again, two, three, four, five, six, B slash D sharp. This is the dominant of E minor, but the 5-6-5 five, five is going to be in first inversion like this. And so the bass note is going to be D sharp. That's going to be a flash. The top two notes, back to E minor. Two, three. Now notice here that there are some rests, so you're only going to be playing a, do, a, a quarter note. Excuse me, not a dotted quarter note just like you see up here. So these are going to be uh, doubled. Let's go now to the next one. Same thing again. Two, three, four, five, six. Same chord. Two, three, four, five, six. B7. This is root position. And it's asking us to play it in root position. So how can we play this in the best possible way that will establish the quality of this chord. We don't need to add a fifth. The fifth is actually gonna be played on the second unit or the beat number four of the measure. So we don't have to add an F sharp there. So the best possible thing to do here would be to play root and to play the third and seventh together as the top notes and then you would have to kind of curve your hand up here. And now that's just for the sake of exercise. I mean, if I wanted to, I would actually have done this again, but it's wanting us to play it in root position, so we have to play it like this. Okay, so now that you've understood that, go ahead and write in the missing notes. And now let's go ahead and play with the harmony. One, two, three, four, five. Sounding very different from the rest of that, but that's what it's printed. And this is just for our practice. Okay, so let's go ahead and practice that. Make sure that you understand the harmonies and why you made the decisions that you did. And we will see you in the next lesson.